And that's not like me not being able to read. That is her not being able to write. Welcome to the second part of the Penguin Modern Quest Journey Through the Box Part 2. I already said it's the second part, I don't know why I repeat that. But it's time to go through the next five books. So if you haven't seen the first one, please check it out where I went through the first five books of the box. And now it's time to go through the next five. So um, I'll try to do it like one book a day if I'll manage to. If not, I'll just film whenever I finish one book and then I start the other. So let's go through them. The first book, well, the book number six. Can you see that? So book number six is The Veiled Woman by Anais Min. Um, this is transgressive desires and sexual encounters are recounted in these four pieces from one of the greatest writers of erotic fiction. So there are four short stories. Yes, there are. And sounds interesting. I will tell you what it is about once I finish this. So let's do this. I gave this book five stars. I just, I did not expect to like it as much as I did, but I did like it. Also, at, some, at one point, it just got into it. Like, I did read that it is erotica, but once I started actually reading it, I was like, whoa, but it was fine. Also, what I love the most about this book is that I guess it's written by a woman. <laughs> I don't know how to say this properly, but a lot of times when you read like romance or erotica or things like that it's very very much from a male point of view there's the male gaze that just follows around and feels kind of icky if you will but i did not feel this with this book it's just it was so well written uh it's four stories that kind of follow four different women and just their sexual exploits if you will just their relationship with sex and I loved it. It's so well written. Also, the first story is only 10 pages long, but the plot twist, I loved it. I did not expect it, but I loved it. It's so good. So definitely recommend this. This was The Veiled Women and I really enjoyed it. So I'm glad that the first book is a five star. That's like a good thing. So let's pick the next book. So we have this one here, this is Notes on Nationalism by George Orwell. Uh, this says, biting and timeless reflections on patriotism, prejudice and power from the man who wrote about his nation better than anyone. And let's see. So this is again, three different stories or things. Um, this is the book, by the way. Uh, and I just, I look forward to it. Let's go. Let's do it. Another great book. So we are on a roll. I love this book. It's just, like I said, it has three kind of essays in it. The first is Notes on Nationalism. The second is Antisemitism in Britain. And the third is The Sporting Spirit. And all of them have the nationalist idea in them. The first one goes fully into it and explains like, what Orwell thinks it is, like his definition, and then he kind of splits it into three parts. Okay, so he says, below are listed the varieties of nationalism now flourishing among English intellectuals with such comments as seem to be needed. It is convenient to use three headings, positive, transferred, and negative. And under each he has a few examples like positive nationalism is neo-tourism, Celtic nationalism, or um, Zionism, transfer nationalism. Again, he has communism and all that. And I really loved the way he wrote. My little book is underlined. Can you see that? Please focus. Can you see that? It's underlined like crazy because I, I really loved what he wrote and a lot of the ideas he wrote in this little book are still so valid even today. Maybe not 
the entire thing of what he talks about in the nationalism part, but especially with anti-Semitism, it's still unfortunately prevalent today because he says that intellectuals will never admit to being anti-Semitic. They'll just say that, oh, I'm not anti-Semitic. I just don't particularly like that person of that race. So you can definitely see that in today's society as well. And it's just, it's so fascinating how some of these books were written so long ago, but they're still so relevant today, like this notes on nationalism or there was Martin Luther King Jr. letter from Birmingham jail. It's astonishing. Just, it, it really puts things into perspective. Um, and the third one says how, um, like the one with the sporting spirit, uh, says how sports are basically um, small wars in which each side picks a nation to cheer for and it can get very violent. Uh, like he says, okay, at the international level, sport is frankly mimic warfare. And I agree, it's just such a good book. I definitely recommend this. I gave a 425. Um, some things in the first, well, in all of these uh, essays um, didn't quite reach as much as I wanted them to, but I still fully enjoyed it and I'm really glad I got to read it. So this is the second book of this video and the seventh book from the collection. So another one done. Now the next one, let me put this here. Is number eight, This is Food by Gertrude Stein. And in this book, it says, from apples to artichokes, this glittering fragmented painterly portraits of food by the avant-garde pioneer, Gertrude Stein are redolent of sex, laughter, and the joy of everyday life. So this has been going great so far, and I really hope I'm going to enjoy this as well. So I'll see you later. It is the evening of the same day and can you believe I wasn't lazy enough not to film this? Like, insane. Um, so I did finish Food by Gertrude Stein and I hated it. I just, it was so bad. I gave it a one star. It, it just felt like gibberish. It just, there was a bunch of words and none of them made sense. A lot of them repeated and it's just, no. I also, um, after I rate my books on StoryGraph, I looked at other people's reviews. I don't look at reviews beforehand because I don't want to be influenced, but I looked after and one of the comments was like, gave them one star as well and was like, maybe I'm too dumb to understand it. And that was exactly how I felt reading this book. It just, I don't understand it. There was another review that was like three stars that was sad. It's gibberish, but it's, gibberish that I love or something like that. And I was like, no, that is just snobbery. It's just, mm -mm. let me read you some of the things. Okay, this one, cause I found it, I thought it was so absurd. It's from the eating thing um, poem. I couldn't call it a poem. It's not a short story. I don't know what it is. Just a bunch of words put together. Okay, so here you go. Elas, Elas, with no, no pee, no pee, cool, no pee, cool, cooler, no pee, cooler, with a land, a land cost in, with a land cost in stretches. Eating, he heat, eating, he heat, it eating, he heated, heat, eating, he heat, eating. And that's not like me not being able to read, that is her not being able to write. Just Reading this, I feel like I'm dyslexic. This is what people must feel like. And this is also what people must think English is like when you don't speak it, because it makes absolutely no sense, none. So definitely a book I would never recommend and will happily forget for eternity. But this is the eighth book and I am glad that I am progressing with my little collection. So <laughs> let's choose the second the next book that i'm going to read tomorrow because right now that nonsense was enough so this is the three electronites by stanislaw lem 
And on the back of this book it says, from a giant of 20th century science fiction, these four miniature space epics feature crazy inventors, surreal worlds, robot kings, and madcap machines. Okay, I look forward to it. And I'll tell you tomorrow how I felt about it. Bye. Fourth book done, and I really like this one. Um, this is made out of four stories, the three Electronites, the White Death, King uh, Globaris and the Sages, and the Tale of King Gnuff. And I really like the first two, particularly, and the second, like, the other two were fine, it's just, they weren't fantastic, but I did enjoy them. I can't say that I didn't like them. Th there was just something in them that was missing. Um, I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars because, again, I enjoyed the majority of it. Um, and I loved how the author was able to create an entire world and then just have a plot in like less than 10 pages because there are four stories in this and this is like 52 pages because most of these books are around 52, 60 pages or not a lot. So I loved his ability to just make so much out of so little, if that makes sense. Um, I particularly enjoyed the first story, like the three Electronites, after which the book was named, so that was a great story. Um, the plot was great, the writing was really nice, and the way he creates the world and the characters in themselves, I really enjoyed that. So I do recommend, and I would be interested to check out some more works from this author. So this was the fourth book, now let's pick the fifth one. So look how many I've read already. I'm, I'm so proud of myself. So the next one and the last one from this video is uh, The Great Hunger by Patrick Cavanaugh. This here, uh, this says, by turns tragic and comic, irrational and exalted, these are some of the best loved poems by a writer who transformed Irish verse. Okay, so these are poems, and the thing about poems is, at least for me, it's very difficult to find a poem that I like. Poems are very subjective, all literature is subjective, but I feel like poems in particular are so much easier to love or hate, particularly hate, because it's just so little. Um, well, most of them are quite small, so there's not a lot to analyze. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but it's just difficult to find poems that I enjoy. So I hope that I will like this book. So I'll tell you all about it once I'm done with it. Let's go. Another book done. And as I thought, poetry is tricky, okay? It is. It's just... There was one poem in here that I liked and the others were like, meh. It's just, mm, it wasn't for me. There was also one poem that was so long. I feel like that was the main one in the book, which is why the book is named after it. I just realized it. Um, it's called The Great Hunger and it it's over 20 pages, I want to say. I haven't counted them, but... It was nice in the way that it kind of told the life of a farmer, kind of, but also it, it, it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. It's just, no. Uh, but there is a poem I did like. It's called Consider the Grass Growing and it goes like this. Consider the grass growing as it grew last year and the year before. Cool about the ankles like summer rivers. When we walked on a May evening through the meadows to watch the mare that was going to fall. It's nothing special, but I really liked it. It just, it was simple, but it's also kind of like day-to-day -day life, if you will. And I really like that poem, but it's, it's the only one in this book that stood out to me. So I gave this a two stars out of five. It just, poems are difficult to find that the ones that you like. So I wasn't extremely disappointed with this, but I wasn't impressed with it either. So a good two out of five. So this was the last book of this episode. Um, we read five, let me gather them. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
yeah this one's here we have them in order and these are the ones we went through this time it was so much fun i just so glad i got to read more because i found some that i really like like uh the veiled woman or notes on nationalism i had ones that i hated like this food one um the three electro nights was kind of in the middle i really liked the first two from this series but hated the second two and this was kind of in between but not really it was not good but not bad so i'll i will take that overall i feel like this is a good selection that we got this time so having great books and bad books is great because if they were all bad i would have suffered so this was a good selection. I really liked it and I do recommend that you do pick them up. Um, even if it, you don't buy the whole box because you don't have to, they do sell all of these separately. So if any of them interested you, please pick it up. It's just such a good way to discover more authors and works and things you might not read um, typically. So I do fully recommend. Uh, also, if you haven't checked out, please check out the first video. I should have mentioned it at the beginning. I don't remember if I did, but um, I go through the first five books in the series and this is the second five. Well, the next five. Um, so yeah, this was it. This was today's episode. And if you liked it, please give it a like. Please comment below if you read any of these books and what you think about them. Um, did you think the same things? like me or did you have other opinions because I know my opinions will not be the same as other people's it's just not happening um also please consider subscribing for more videos like these and I have a second channel where I play sims so please check that out as well and I will see you next time bye I just give the earth my soul hear my thoughts bounce off the walls